I have made a lot of videos comparing some of the most popular PC handhelds, so I figured it might be a good time to make a guide to help you decide which is the best for you and your wallet. There are a lot of choices, even some that have not even come out yet, and I will evaluate whether or not you should get any of these unreleased devices at the very end of the video. And right before we jump into this, why don't you hit that subscribe button, I would super appreciate it. The Steam Deck is not the only handheld in town anymore, but the Steam Deck still has a few advantages over its competitors, mainly being price and support by Valve. One of the key factors to Valve support is the overall repairability with the device. Valve has partnered with iFixit to sell all the parts and tools you could ever need to repair the device, which for me, being a person who likes to be able to fix my device myself, and if you care about that, the Steam Deck is by far the best in terms of repairability. The deck also gets a lot of support from devs, offering some optimizations for the Steam Deck. Some offer specific settings to help deliver a premium experience. The deck is the closest thing to a proper game console experience when you compare it to literally any other of the PC handhelds out there. For those who just want the closest thing to a painless and simple handheld PC experience, the deck is bar none. And that's all thanks to SteamOS. But that isn't to say there aren't any problems with SteamOS and the Steam Deck. Not all games are supported in SteamOS. Most games like esports titles won't work because of either anti-cheat or lack of controller support. That goes for games like Apex Legends, Black Desert, DayZ, Destiny 2, Fall Guys, and even Rainbow Six Siege. Though not all of them suffer from the same exact problems of why they aren't playable on the Steam Deck, but they all aren't playable on the Steam Deck and there's some incredibly popular games that are kind of missing from the Steam Deck. But irregardless of those missing titles, the Steam Deck is still amazing. You can get it starting at 350 for the 64 gigabyte LCD model and starting at 550 for the 512 gig OLED model. The Legion Go has been a little divisive for me in terms of whether or not I like it or I don't like it, but the Legion Go and I have settled that and I've basically come to terms with that it's not really for me. It's still definitely one of the most unique PC handhelds by doing exactly what you think it's doing, copying the Nintendo Switch, which isn't an inherently bad thing. It is one of the most flexible PC handhelds thanks to its form factor. The Legion Go has supported a Thunderbolt 4 port, which allows it to connect to an external GPU or even a Thunderbolt dock, which is great for people who like the idea of replacing their PC setup with one of these devices. An own relative of mine has done this, whether they're on the work site just playing on their Legion Go during lunch, or taking it home to file taxes. When they're done doing work, they can undock it and keep playing, or they can keep it docked and use the external GPU that they have to play games on a proper gaming PC setup. It's thanks to the flexibility that the Legion Go offers that it's truly become a very compelling option for a lot of people. It does require a little bit of investment, especially if you want to get into like external GPUs and Thunderbolt docks and stuff like that. But overall, yes, it's an expensive thing to get into sometimes, depending on what you want to do, but you can take those accessories and take them to another laptop, a desktop even. So it's not a terrible idea, especially because you can take these same accessories you have and use it on a laptop in the future, or even with a different gaming handheld in the future. The Legion Go does run Windows, so expect some jank, but when is there not a little bit of jank with these handhelds? So you can get the Legion Go for $629 for the 512 gig model. That is a sale price. Its normal price is $700 and $800 for the one terabyte model. But you could also get an open box version for around $550 to $600 depending on availability and condition, which is a really good value. The ROG Ally is a good value, but not new in my opinion. While ASUS is not in a very good spot in terms of public relations, but darn it, this device is still really good and can be a fantastic value at the right price. But right now, for a brand new iLi, you can get it for $550 on sale at Best Buy right now. 
Normal price is 650, but that's not what I would do. What I would do is buy an open box ally because you can get one of those for 350 bucks for the Z1 Extreme Equipped version, which is a tremendous value, especially considering the power of this device, being at times 20% faster and better than the Steam Deck, and like the same to like 8% worse than the Legion Go. Depends on the game, because it's all up to the memory speed, which being faster on the Legion Go can offer more performance in memory intensive games. So if you take advantage of those, I would say get the Legion Go then. But overall, the it's just a tremendous value. But bear in mind, this is hyper dependent on timing and local availability. Because I frequently see in my Best Buy just a rotating carousel of these open box allies. They're constantly coming in and out of stock. So if you see one at a good price and you wanna run that risk on an open box device, go for it because it probably won't be there tomorrow. The last main handheld I'm gonna be talking about is a really weird one. The MSI Claw is just a strange device. It is super cool in a way, being one of the only Intel based devices, but it just, it is really hit and miss with this device. Sometimes the games run really well and it's really impressive. For example, you can get like 120 FPS on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 if you're running the ultra low settings, which is phenomenal, hitting the refresh rate of the display and it looks amazing. But then there are also times where if you're trying to play like Batman Arkham City, the game won't even open. So it's really, really inconsistent. And you can really see that by how much faith and really just trust MSI put in the device by the fact that they already have announced a brand new claw device. And it's basically guaranteed to be just as weird and janky and inconsistent as this one because it's running just the newer generation of Intel chips and the problems they were experiencing weren't because of any like, oh, it's, this generation was just bad. No, it's just how Intel and their new graphics work. It's just not perfect yet. A lot of problems that they're experiencing are just because they're very new to the space. So it's not inherently their fault, but it's just gonna take time for these to get ironed out. And personally, I don't want to beta test a product. So if you want to run the risk on this device, you can, but I will just blank it now and say it's not worth it. And then that's even taking into consideration that it has gotten better with time. But I don't buy a product based on what it could be. I buy it based on what it is now. Now we have entered in the last section, the unreleased handhelds, things like the Ally X, the Zotac Zone, the rumored Legion Go Lite, and I really don't understand why these are really tipping the scale for some people. Majority of these handhelds, excluding the Zotac Zone, are just minor refreshes. Both the Legion Go and the Ally X are going to be using the same exact processors as their previous iterations. The MSI Claw is the only one changing entire chipsets. So I can't speak on the Claw's relative performance, but you should expect basically the same performance with the new devices as the old ones. Maybe a little better cooling, maybe a little bit quieter, much better battery life. But overall, it should be almost the same, maybe a couple of percentages better thanks to having faster memory and more of memory, but just not really worth it, especially considering they're charging even more for these devices. And the way I see it, they're releasing these devices to reset their MSRPs that have been eroded with time. The Legion Go originally came out at $800 and you're getting it for like $200 cheaper nowadays. And the Ally originally came out about $700. And that's been eroded all the way down to 350 bucks if you're a savvy shopper. So it's not really realistic for most people who should be buying these new devices. I say they're mainly for the people who are waiting specifically for them if they're waiting for like a specific feature or waiting for a new player to come in like Zotac. Zotac is the only one that I can realistically recommend to people 
if they want an OLED display, because that's the only selling point I can see that the Zotac has. It is running a newer generation SoC, but it's basically going to be the same because it runs the same 780M graphics, which the problem on these devices isn't the CPU performance, it's going to be the graphics performance, and if it's running the same chipset, it doesn't really matter if this is Ryzen 8000 processor. It's going to run exactly the same for the most part because it's running the same 780M graphics. And as for the other companies like GPD and iNeo, their stuff is really cool, but it's too darn pricey for me to recommend it. They don't offer any better performance because they just use the same things as the other companies do, but they just have nicer designs, which for me isn't enough. Don't get me wrong, their designs are amazing, but that's not going to make me spend an extra $400 at times for those devices. My overall recommendation is an open box RG Ally if you get your hands on it. And for brand new, I'm going to say a Steam Deck OLED because the battery life and display is superb. And yes, you're going to be losing your performance, but the overall experience will be a lot nicer. I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you own any of these devices? Are you excited for any of these unreleased handhelds? Did this video help you decide on what handheld to buy? Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.